In 1981, three engineers founded SMA and became pioneers of the global energy transition. Their vision was to provide renewable energies to people across the globe. Our mission is now more relevant than ever. We want to shape the energy transition with your help. Welcome to Let's Talk Energy. Broadcasting live from the new Solar Academy studio at our SMA headquarters in Kassel, Germany. Learn all about the latest innovations and developments at SMA. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to today's session of Let's Talk Energy here at SMA. My name is Bernhard Schütz. I'm the head of the product group service in the large scale business unit. And with me today is Benam Rasek. He's our service sales representative for the EMEA region. Together, we will present you today an important topic if you want to have a long-term asset running reliability and safely, selecting a good own M provider and some key points that out of our experience, which is basically 40 years in the business, uh, should give you some insights that makes your decision easier. Now, Benam, if you want to present yourself. I would also like to welcome the audience um, to my background. I'm an economic engineer and I've been in the PV industry for 18 years. The last two have been with the SMA um, sales organization, where um, uh, for the um, uh, service products for large scale PV and uh, storage in the operational phase. And uh, my emphasis is on uh, own them. Yeah. Very well. And just to give you a little bit a glimpse of the value of experience you can tap also into today. Um, we're managing currently about 500 million euros in order backlogs for services. A big part of that is owned M. It's globally with different customers. And also what, um, what we can give you on an insight is what we experience from the discussions with our customers. There's going to be different questionnaires throughout the session. So there's going to be pop-ups where you get asked different questions. We would like to make this as interactive as possible, participate. And at the end, we're going to have a half an hour a live web chat where you can also address any question that you might have during the session. Thank you. Um, to as an introduction, we're going to show a video that shows a big overview of what this is all about. And then we dive right in. See you in a second. As a world-leading service team, SMA offers individual operation and maintenance solutions for PV and storage power assets. No matter the size, location, or technology used, we provide industry-leading O&M solutions to safeguard your investment. Our service offering is technologically agnostic, ensuring we've got your PV and storage portfolios protected, no matter what brand of equipment is installed. When an issue does arise, our widely distributed network of service professionals ensures that downtime and lost production is kept to an absolute minimum. At SMA, continuous innovation is critical in developing future-proof O&M solutions for our customers. Our NERC SIP compliant solar monitoring centers based in California and Ulm in the US and Germany provide around-the-clock visibility to your PV and storage plants with 24-7 remote monitoring technology, 365 days a year. From module cleaning to security to troubleshooting sophisticated SCADA equipment, SMA is the most effective O&M partner for driving down lifetime operational costs in utility, commercial, and storage integrated plants. Discuss your O&M needs with SMA today.
Hello, and now let's dive right into here in the experience. Venam, um, if you would describe our customers that you have interaction on a daily basis with that are looking for service providers in the O&M space, how would you describe them? What are their pains? What are their needs when they come to you? Yes. Okay. So our customer base is quite uh, diverse. Um, so when we try to break them down um, or reduce them, um, we, we um, view them as asset owners who have invested in large scale PV or battery energy, energy storage uh, systems. And um, they, they need to secure this investment and optimize the returns of it. So um, within this set, we have um, individuals who are fortunate enough to own um, a large scale PV plant. We have service providers who have contractual obligations um, to the asset owner, and we basically step into their shoes and um, address the end customer, if you will. And we have the large set of um, what we call professional asset owners. Professional because here individuals are paid or are, are um, performing the, uh, the management of ownership uh, full time. And um, they can be within conglomerates. Um, not necessarily with a PV or a storage background. They might be in well-established uh, independent power producers, as we call them. Um, if they have a strong financial background, then, then these are investment houses or uh, asset managers. And finally, we have public energy utilities. When we try to understand uh, our customer, we basically have uh, three dimensions, let's call it. One, we have called it scope of headground, headcount. So we um, are looking if they have a lean organization with lots of subcontracting or if they have large headcounts and uh, a lot of in-house uh, service provision. Second dimension is no novelty. Um, are they investing into unfamiliar um, new technologies um, are they going into new uh, geographic set uh, frameworks or uh, legal or technical frameworks? And finally, and most important in my view, is their uh, risk tolerance or risk appetite. Um, that was the customer. If we look at uh, project-specific project commercial needs, um, most importantly is the um, available budget. Uh, so, so what is the fee that the project can uh, sustain and um, we have then to make the scope fit within this fee. Um, does the asset owner want to perform um, uh, tasks by himself? So, so is there internal scope? Is he going to assign tasks to um, external service providers? And finally, what is the cost of downtime and therefore what is the required availability and uh, response time? So um, if, we, if, if all that um, um, is understood, if there is clarity on the scope that he wants to perform on his needs, on the required uh, availability, what can SMR bring to the table here? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Benam, for that uh, customer view. So what can SMA bring to the table? And this is exactly what we are also asking us in the product development of new services or own them. What is the customer thinking of financing model? How is their long-term view? Do we understand the customer's business to make it all work? And what important role can we play to reduce the risk and make that business a success of our customers? To go and give you some more insights here, I'm going to change over to the other screen and I see you in a second. So what can SMA bring to the table to our customers that reduces the risk and sustain their business? First of all, we are 40 years in the PV and storage business. According to external reports, for example, McKenzie, SMA is one of the top 10 global players in this market. Um, if, you, if you look at our service network that spans 130 countries in the world, that's either with own people or with service partners that we have then in the location our technical management expertise regarding O&M specifically goes back 15 years. We are providing performance and uptime guarantees as everybody else in the market. And meanwhile, we are managing 4.8 gigawatt of PV and storage assets. Then 
what we see as very important is that we understand we are part of your business success. If we don't perform, your asset won't run, your business will not be sustainable. So we are in it together. That's our topic for today. Now look at some major markets that we are present here, the Americas, from Canada down to Chile. You see these uh, red points are the big service hubs with own infrastructure, own service people. We are managing over 3.7 gigawatts in the, in the Americas. And we have our monitoring center, one of two independent monitoring centers is right in Rocklin on the Pacific coast. And areas where we are not yet present with a full-fledged service structure, we have service providers. Then let's go further to the, to the Europe, which is our oldest market. You see, Europe has quite a good coverage. Our headquarter is in Germany, in the center of Germany as well, with a second monitoring center. And we are managing about 1.1 gigawatt out of uh, Europe. You see also there we are down until South Africa, we are in the Middle East, and we cover more and more areas also with uh, service providers. Now, to finish that up, APEC. Let's look at APEC. APEC, we are, have an old established market in Japan, we are in India, and we are entering the market in Australia for o and &M. We are there already with an infrastructure in service, but the market entry we are preparing for Australia, Thailand, and Korea. So, this is now our global span of where we are present. It would be very nice to get an input from our audience. Where are you coming from? Where's your location? Where do you work? So there's going to be a quick uh, questionnaire coming up. Please participate and let us know where you're from. Thank you. One example of a recent market entry of us is back here in Europe with Hanwha Energy Corporation. Um, they had one uh, project in Ireland two times 100 megawatt storage. They wanted to have 10 years safe and reliable uh, operation and look for a service provider. SMA has no traditional market in Ireland, but with the upcoming energy storage business, we decided to, to enter the market and open our own entity with our own staffing to be able to guarantee the performances and to support the customer needs. So the message we want to send out here to you is um, wherever you go, wherever you plan your business, we are with you, we go there, and we help you, support you in any way we can. Now, looking at all this, Benam, what do you think? Is this addressing the customer needs and pains and helps them manage their risk in the market? Well, if, if we actually um, create a transparent and trustful environment and understand the customer and his needs, because o and services are um, tailor-made or cu customizable, um, it's it's usually, in my experience, it's possible to really have a tailor-made um, uh, scope for them. Um, if we look more broadly, not only focusing on o and um, we have created around our equipment um, a universe of service products like uh, spare part availability, uh, sorry, spare part warranty, availability guarantees, response time, things like that. And, um, and um, we can really find um, what is the customer, customer's need and what is the product. Mm -hmm. um, but what I wanted to point out, um, as, as we said in the uh, intro video, uh, we called that technological agnostic. In o and m we are not limited to, own, uh, to, to SMR equipment. That's right. Um, we can do um, everything. There is another point um, that I wanted to make, and that is um, in the market, we are now seeing a development, um, and I'll explain it here, to, to, to achieve longevity of the assets. So, so we are coming from feed-in regimes of uh, 20 years. Um, our spare part um, warranties, our, our o and contracts, they have been 20 years. But we know that the PV plant, the modules, they can live actually 35 to 40 years. And now we see new business models like uh, power purchase uh, agreements um, that are virtually unlimited if you want. So the customers now is pushing us to, to adapt, to, to have a technological and, um, and contractual um, setup to guarantee operations of his asset for 35 years, which is amazing. Bernard, other points you wanted to point out? Yes, uh, thanks Benham. Um, 
Mostly these extension we see here on, on the years are also due to the different financing models that are more stretched and stretched out. So we see these also coming. So now we are discussing the risk profiles of customers and that can range from a customer that has a high risk contract to customer that have lower risk contracts and are sometimes even self-performing. So here we can offer then traditional spare part management, vegetation abatement, some of the basic services that you are looking for in that location and we, are can, and we can add to your portfolio. Then we go more to a traditional way, that is the core service maintenance, preventative maintenance and the monitoring, which is normally the standard package for O&M. And now we move up on the risk scale where we manage the whole plan for the customers, we have all correctives in there and we have uptime guarantees. And here comes a key point for SMA. Not everybody has the technical power and the insights of the design of the equipment and can do corrective maintenance. SMA has designed the core equipment, MVPS and, and inverters of the station. We have a lot of engineers at our fingertip available and we can also execute corrective maintenance. You don't need to have a separate provider for that one. Or if your original manufacturer has lost the business or went out of business and doesn't exist anymore, there we come in and we can have a solution. And we move up to the more risk, to the top risk projects where we have complete asset management, technical performance guarantees, where the customer maybe is an investor, has not such a technical background and we can take that and we can support you with services that fits that risk appetite. So for us at SMA, asset management, is also risk management or it's basic risk management. And how do we do that? What do we apply at SMA that differentiates us from others? Sorry, that was the wrong way. Now let's do it this way. SMA has delivered more than 100 gigawatt of inverters all over the world. And of course, we are getting data from those devices. Now we are using that data to assess potential technical risks and also use it to optimize the asset and the maintenance plan that goes with it. So we are using predictive maintenance methods to evaluate, is there damage coming up? If there is an asset at risk, do we have to go out or can we just run it a little bit longer? With that decision possibility, you also relieve the strain on your logistics and spare part business. So look at today's situation where we have a pandemic that sometimes forces borders to be closed you have supply chain issues, just remember the Suez Canal incident with that one ship. Um, and that also puts a strain on the whole supply chain. Now you suddenly are in an emergency situation, you have to fly parts around the world. And uh, as soon as you use the data that's available to you in a, in a smart way, you can also ease up spare part management and have the parts there when you need them. And of course, as I said before, who better to manage a plant that has designed it. Who better to manage a core equipment like an MVPS, like a battery system, as the ones that did the layout in the first place. So here we have over 500 engineers in our headquarters in Germany available. And with them, we can have a fast troubleshooting. We don't have to stand in line with another manufacturer and ask for their input and wait maybe on their response. So we have direct access to engineering resources. Now, Monitoring and performance. A lot of companies out there claim to be leaders in monitoring and performance management. Um, what we do is we are using two independent monitoring centers in SMA in two different time zones. We have one in Rocklin, USA, and we have one right here in Germany. And with that, they are having two independent systems, but they can cooperate with each other. So we can cover actively 24 seven monitoring with two independent stations. Further on that, with all this data and with these standby monitoring centers, we also apply virtual reality applications like augmented reality that help our service uh, providers or our service technicians that are out there with any problem they encounter, which they are may not prepared for. And even we give this to our customers. After they have run a training with us and are certified, we open these possibilities up to their technicians so they can have access on a fingertip directly to our experts back home. And with that, we are able to take on risks that traditional O&M can't. And with this, we can up, guarantee uptimes and energy availability, as some in the markets have not been able to. Bernard, allow me a quick question. As we see in the bigger markets today, there are more and more vertically integrated O&M service providers. In your opinion, is this a benefit or a limitation of SMR's O&M offerings? 
That's a very good point, Benam. Um, let's talk about a little bit vertically integrated and specialized O&M providers, because we encounter that a lot in the market and also discussions with our customers. Um, what we have here is the integrated value chain from one provider. The value to the customers is pretty clear. You have all the vertical tasks that are there to be done on an O&M station. You have all in-house. You can Interfaces are streamlined, everything is standardized, it's normally quick and cost efficient, and you can pass on that benefit to the customers. Now, you can also be very specific to customer focus of one market if you are aligned like that. Now, again, contrary to that one, let's look at the specialized value chain. We are maybe one provider just has a core of the service, and the customer needs to have different providers along the value chain to fulfill his requirements. Now, the advantage of this one is that the customer is very flexible who he takes for special tasks. And this could be specialized companies that maybe one provider is not so good at. So here, he can improve his services with specific needs. Maybe that doesn't fit the other one. And he can adjust over time to changing markets. This is definitely a benefit. Um, now, here at, at, MA, at SMA, we can combine the best of these both worlds. Now. We have a complete integrated value chain. We offer all services from the DC field over the whole plant, preventative maintenance, monitoring. You go up to the core equipment correctives. You have third-party warranty management, and you do the complete asset for the customers. Now, if for any reason customers are either partially self-performing or the market is, has no need for the complete value chain, we can specify that scope and adapt it exactly to the customer needs. So he gets really the best of both worlds. We can adapt to his specific needs while having standardized interfaces. And I think that's something, a unique selling point, which not every O&M provider in the market has to offer. Bernard, allow me another question. If you would um, divide uh, current O&M providers into three categories, one technologically unspecific, one technologically based with a strong man manufacturing of modules uh, background and one with the background of inverters. Um, is there a case to be made for cherry picking for the customer? Now, let me go over to you, Benam, and then we can discuss that question in detail. Yes, Benam, uh, thanks for that question. If you ask me directly what an O&M service provider I would choose if I have the manufacturer of the panels, the manufacturer of the core equipment, and uh, the manufacturer of maybe some other parts, I would definitely go with the one that's most critical no? and has a strong engineering background. For example, if you look at, at older assets, no? and uh, if a panel is damaged, that's rather easy to exchange. No? But if you look at the core equipment like a central inverter, or power plant manager that's not working, your whole plant is down. You have a much bigger impact that's more critical. And if you then get not the support from the manufacturer, then you could really be in a critical situation. No? So what SMA can bring to the table, again, is um, here the repowering as um, a function. We have an own team that's just dedicated on assessing uh, assets of customers. And these are assets with other inverters, not, not even ours. These are third-party inverters, some big players, you name ABB, Schneider Electric. You go for AEG, for the Italian ones, Bonfignoli, Siemens, what have you. We have replaced about up to five gigawatt at the moment in repowering worldwide. And uh, this market is very much growing. So what's happening in repowering? In repowering, we're assessing the site and we look for a technical solution so you get a modern, up-to-date inverter replaced for the old one that may be not working, you may be not getting spare parts, you may be not getting the service anymore. And with that, we get your energy production back on track and the uptime that is most critical now. On the other side, you get a service level from an organization that's covering 130 countries in the world, either ourselves or with service partners. And you get new features. You maybe want to add storage to adapt your asset to the market condition and can make a different business. We can do that during repowering. You can put in a hybrid inverter and you can add a battery to that installation. Looking at the plant life cycle, if you look at that, that you replacing core equipment like an inverter or an MVPS station, what happens, you are resetting the clock of the plant and you're starting new. You have a new warranty, you have new features, and you can use your asset about double as long as originally planned. If we saw Original planning was for 20 years of operation. No? 
and now we are talking 35 to 40 years of operation, we can do that with repowering. So if you look at the summary, the benefits of repowering bring to you is the availability, the energy efficiency, the uptime, the renewed warranty, and different features that's all adding up to your reliable business to manage the risk that you have, but also to reduce for us the own M cost or at least maintain them. And so we can give that benefit to you. So for repowering, we also have, if there are other questions, we have a separate session. Let's talk energy, just repowering with two experts that's gonna be referring to, and it's right after this one. So if you are interested in that topic, please tune in to that session and you can then get all your questions answered. So back to us here. If you look at repowering and all this stuff that SMA has to offer in the O&M space, Benham, what would be a good, good point in time when customers should approach us if they are assessing an opportunity in the market? So, so if they have clarity when they uh, want to start commercially the plant, if it's new, or when they want us to um, take over the service, they should contact us uh, roughly six months before that. Um, because we are going to need one to two months to actually um, come to a commercial agreement mm. um, to have the scope uh, Tyler made for them. Uh, we need two to three months to negotiate the actual um, contract and to have a signature. And then we need three months of, separ of uh, preparation for the, um, for the services. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan now. Huh? And with this, we have now the final, the final uh, stage of this session. We also gonna have after this the, the web chat for half an hour and where we can answer all your questions. Benam, what do you wanna add? Yes, so, <clears throat> well, uh, you see in the background the, the, the current uh, energy uh, uh, generation. And if we move to a renewable world, uh, globally the job of the O&M teams is to ensure liability of, this new, uh, of these new technologies. And, um, and if we break it down to the uh, context of economic liability for the asset owners, it is the job of the O&M uh, teams to ensure that the assumptions in the financial model come true. In case of SMR, um, we are doing this through bankability of the SMR products and services through um, commercial guarantees that we can give such as uh, availability um, through the financial strength and the um, longevity of SMR's existence. And finally, and most importantly, through the continuous investment into um, the training and know-how of our own damn personnel. Yeah. So we have come now to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed it and you got some valuable information. And we are looking forward to your questions and input in the chat. So thanks again for watching. Thank you for your attention. We look forward to your questions and comments during the discussion with experts. Just follow the link.